Ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube, beyond however you're watching, welcome back to the dojo. I'm Ryu. He's age, and I'm melting, because it's going to be 100 degrees for the next foreseeable future. But we're here to record and watch Harley Quinn, which that's what we're doing today. This is going to be Harley Quinn, season 3, episode 3. And, well, I'm ready for whatever hilarity is going to ensue. You know, we got Nightwing introduced to the series last week. We got shitty escape rooms with chess and the Riddler. That was cool. Um, see if Clayface is still working on, you know, the, uh, the gun film on, uh, uh about, uh, Thomas Wayne, you know, see if we get Ratman at some point. <laughs> There's all kinds of stuff that can happen this season. It's, it's going to be fun. But, um, since there's no real huge overarching storyline going on right now outside of the like stuff that's going on every once in a while like the mayoral race and uh you know i guess we have plant god frank now kind of we'll, we'll see what what the deal is with that that could be fun <laughs> and i guess they have to find a new base because you know the mall is kind of toast <laughs> and once again bane has been foiled <laughs> He didn't even get to explode them all. Yep. Maybe he'll rebuild it just so that he can blow it up. You know. <laughs> but um, I don't really have a huge amount to say going into this one. I expect some sort of hilarity. I mean, with these um, with these episodes, they actually have episode titles, so there are some things you can kind of infer. Um, this sounds like it's going to be some kind of award show, something. I don't know. Maybe it'll be a shit take on the Oscars or something, but other than that, I'm just excited to be watching Harley again this week. So, you got anything, H? Yeah. Personally, I haven't seen any of the episode titles because I'm not the one looking at the list. Fair but, enough. Uh, yeah, I don't know. This, this season hasn't been as interesting as season one and season two as of yet, but we're still pretty early on in it, so we'll right. see. Yeah, I mean, this is only episode three, so... That being said, uh, here goes episode three. So let's push some buttons and see what happens this week, shall we? All right, bye. Oh, wait, 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 before you go. Girl, come on, you got a dish. Like, tell me about this guy. What's his butt like? Like, is it cool? He's fine. What? Yeah, no, totally. <laughs> I bet you could do so much better. That's uh, it's a pretty random question. Shall I continue? <sighs> it's not worth it. One time, he didn't even take me! He just took one of his goons! Dean. Oh, it was Dean. I want to be on that stage with you, holding up our villain <laughs> right in the middle of that circle, Jer! Honey, I just got my lab set I, up. I got momentum on I, I, I have nothing for this. Zone. I got nothing. When have I actually even <laughs> used the words in the zone? Oh, can't you step out of the zone for one night and then after pop right back into the zone? <laughs> and we say happy Billy Sunday from Gotham City's lovely crime I didn't fully catch what his text was, but it was something to do with Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, it was something about Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> a lot of great couples this year. Now you two were some of Gotham's first openly gay villains. Must not have been easy. <laughs> you might say the hardest riddle I ever solved was my own sexuality. Uh, hey, excuse me, can you pass me the water? Hell? Oh. Ah. Uh, live from crime. Are you supposed to be in your own show, damn it? <laughs> Prince of Crime, Joker. All in the past, actually, I have completely, totally moved on. Even brought my new boo. You're dating Bane? What? I got a pretty good gig as a seat filler. <laughs> my, my girlfriend's not here. <laughs> nice. She's running late, but she's definitely <laughs> real. I have a girlfriend who is real, real hot. Mui Caliente. <laughs> I'm don't... supposed to be in there with my new boyfriend, but I'm way too nervous. Why is that? Those assholes assigned us to sit next to his ex fiance Ooh, about that. <laughs> And the award for the most creative non de poom goes to Cock King! Oh, I, he's a chicken! After 80 plus years, you finally realize you haven't let a single black villain win, no matter how much we deserve it. Black Manta has been out here for years as a marquee villain, and you don't see him getting an award. He's black? And you think he's <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was. You guessed yep. It, a white dude. 
Someone's in here. Yo, move it or lose it, invisible kid. Uh, an imperceptible man. <laughs> oh wow. I'm done for. It was good knowing you, friend. Too bad you can't just turn into Billy Bob Thor and then live out your dream as a movie star. It'd be far too much to keep up with. Balancing his busy life with your own much less busy but probably still important life. Screw Clayface. I choose Thornton. Hmm. Well, only one thing to do. Trophy's mine! <laughs> On behalf of Harley and Ivy, I'd like to thank my loyal goons. Dean, shout out! Laura, my co-class mom, shouldn't be gendered. And of course, my better half, Bethany. Mwah. You are my rock! And hey, kids, you better be off to bed, but if not, this one's for you, Benicio and Soap Soap. Good night! Well, as we can see, they're no longer nominees. It's official. They are the best couple, and Joker got the trophy again. Fantastic. Thanks to Dean. <laughs> Thanks to Dean. Yes. <laughs> that, that was a very uh, monarchy in reference, by the way. It's like you brought your henchmen one time. It's like, well, maybe Joker has his version of 21. Who knows? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, this this was OK. I mean, it didn't have a lot of like hilarious moments, as you pointed out there at the end. But uh, it, it the pacing was pretty damn good um, in it, general. In general, based on these first three episodes, this is coming off just like more a far more serious season, whereas the first two seasons were very comedic. Right. There, there was a lot of character development across the board. You know, we got the return of Kite Man, his girlfriend, which I don't know if she's I assume she's DC canon. I've never heard of her, though. So far besides probably cock king i'm pretty sure basically everyone we've gotten so far in the show has been actually dc canon even if they're just like one-offs right i mean the entire room uh here had like you know people that we recognize you know there's reverse right. flash you know there there is like everybody that you could you know recognize was in this room you know toy man was in there uh obviously black manta was in there <laughs> I, I can't believe they went there, but you know what? I'm not surprised they went there. <laughs> oh, man. Fucking wait, he's black? Yep, that was that was good. Um, but yeah, so I, I guess we know what's going to be going on with the Kite Man series whenever that starts. So that, ma that, that, makes, uh, that makes some sense. Um, once again, Proving that Kite Man was too good of a guy for everybody else in this series. He is like too good of a guy. He, he's too pure for this world. He's too pure for any world. Nobody deserves Kite Man. Okay. And yet, <laughs> and yet he's technically a villain. <laughs> yeah, and yet he's technically a villain. He he. I, I don't know, man. He he is just the the good guy of good guys in not the good guy protagonist sense you know what i mean it's so weird <laughs> it is actually fantastic for this storyline but um yeah I, we, we talked about how we might see him in this uh, season and there he is you know i'm kind of surprised he didn't yeah. make uh, some weird reference about the spinoff honestly but uh you know uh they might be saving that for later but um you know, not, not not even not even as awkward as it could have been. You know, <laughs> current and ex girlfriend got along just fine. You know, Harley didn't break the relationship somehow. It, it was, you know, that was possibly on the table, but it, it seems like they're moving away from that possibility at least for now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like I said, I'm pretty sure like if they're going to break up harley and ivy it's probably not going to be until like next season the season's going to be pretty much entirely focused on them at least trying and we'll have to see like where this season goes right it's just Whether those it's little things like with mind. her losing her mind about like the email and subscribe button you know what i mean and causing lab accidents that could potentially lead to a problem but um i don't know We'll see. Uh, I, it's one of those things that 
based on how the show is going, if they do do another season, it's one of those things where um, it'd be weird. You know what I mean? Because we've already lost um, two major characters from previous seasons with Psycho and Sal. Uh, so it'd be kind of weird to replace Ivy considering how big of a part of the show she was or just even doing a different dynamic of them like not being together anymore. So, eh. But uh, as it stands, I think it'll be fine. Um, but yeah, Kite Man. I mean, we got a bunch of villain cameos, Bane being a seat filler. I mean, this episode had all the ridiculous things that you want with an award show you know you had uh the stuff like we mentioned with black manta you know the the stupid you know token drama which i mean let's face it you know catwoman's right but you know we're not gonna talk about that uh <laughs> we'll we'll leave that that to them and what what it was it was pretty damn funny though and and spot on mind you um yeah i mean in general comic books that don't have a whole lot of black heroes or villains right so um i mean yeah. like probably one of the most like one of the only like major iconic villains is lex luther and he's not even always depicted as being black right so that is what it is uh speaking of catwoman i guess we're now hanging out at her place that, that's the new base and they have to take care of the cats which one of them is a tiger that killed Thornton so now Billy Bob Thornton is gonna be Clayface so I mean the the amount of character just progression in this episode was damn impressive <laughs> well, so, you should probably you should try to find that text to Ryan Reynolds oh yeah the text to Ryan okay since I landed on it props for this Joker segment that was awesome <laughs> I enjoyed that <laughs> That, that was really good. But yeah, that text, it was, a, I don't know if it was to Ryan Reynolds or it was about Ryan Reynolds. It, it's Ryan Reynolds was mentioned in the text. Uh, agent, talk to you later. Ryan Reynolds is asking again if you just please try his gin. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So wait, which one is him? Uh, oh, the, the agent is in black. Uh, is in yeah, the black text, yeah. He's yellow. Yeah, he's yellow. Got it. <laughs> That's... Does Ryan Riddles have a gin? Is that a thing? Is that like Jack Septicai coffee? <laughs> I mean, I know Ryan Reynolds is into a bunch of stuff, but um, sp speaking of uh, Jack Septicai and Ryan Reynolds have a pretty solid connection, which is hilarious. I, I totally forgot about that when I mentioned the coffee thing, but uh, yeah. If he has a gin, like like a new gin, that's that'd be freaking hilarious if they put that in the show. <laughs> so no, he doesn't have a gin, but apparently he's done commercials for Aviation American Gin. Okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll do it. We'll, I'll put a shout out in the edit. How about that? Hashtag not an ad. <laughs> Yeah, so this this was this was good. Um, don't know where this came from, by the way. Uh, this relationship came kind of came out of nowhere, but it seemed kind of like a a ploy to win best couple or something. But uh, you know, interesting. Um, I, I've never well, heard of this guy though, uh, Clockman. Yeah, I don't know about him. Well, apparently, it's been established long enough that they're considered at least in this universe to be the first openly gay villains right so obviously it's you know it's known so um i don't remember the last time we saw the riddler before last episode with his escape room shenanigans though so he's he's been around but it's mostly just been kind of a background character just occasionally showing up when they do big villain gatherings like this right But yeah, this this just ended up to be a big uh, shit take on basically the Oscars, Golden Globes, whatever. Tch, unsurprising. <laughs> so it, it was definitely a fun episode, solid pacing. Um, the, I didn't mention it in the thing, but the freaking the start of Joker's bit here being him just about to freaking kill Robin with the crowbar. <laughs> right. 
I, I forget what movie that happens in, or if it was in a movie that's or the, one of the other series. That's the killing joke. That's the this, one that was the killing joke. That is the one where he canonically kills Robin in that timeline. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, because I, I don't. While I do know a little bit about DC, I don't know like every little time. You know, I know like the major stuff, not like. Um, like even that, I know it's kind of a big deal, and I've heard of it. But my DC knowledge compared to how much stuff is out there, very limited. <laughs> but um, yeah, this this whole sequence that was great. His, his subtle digs on Bane and stuff like that that was fantastic. Bane just continues to be like the best side character just coming out of nowhere for random nonsense. Like he was a seat filler this episode, and he did a callback to the pasta maker. <laughs> I mean, seriously. You, you could cut the tension with one of these, and you wouldn't. Well, who, speaking of, who cuts pasta with a knife? Do you cut pasta? Who cuts pasta? Do people actually cut pasta with a knife? Do people do that? Have I been missing out on cussing, cutting pasta with a knife my entire life? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah, there, there are all kinds of uh, different villains in the background of this. Um, this area. I think uh, there's Grundy back there. I believe that's him sitting with Sinestro. Um, so yeah, th there was a there was a bunch of people out there. But uh, Firefly's there. Yeah, Firefly's there. Um, <laughs> so yeah, this was this was definitely interesting. Um, well, again, not didn't have a lot of openly hilarious moments, but uh, you know the comedy obviously was still there. But this was more about just character development and pacing, and that's. Uh, totally fine <laughs> you know what i mean yeah like i said before this definitely seems to just be a bit more of a serious season where they're focusing more on actually fleshing out the characters more so than just their uh, friggin comedic gimmick right though um this right here is pretty damn hilarious um bane's formal wear is a tie and just a top hat the rest of it is mm -hmm. just his actual you know villain costume <laughs> To be fair, I guess Reverse Flash is sitting there just in full costume. Um, yeah, everyone here is in costume, just with formal aspects thrown onto their costume. Right. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. I, I'm not sure who this guy was supposed to be, but still, solid bit. Also, uh, Calendar Man made another appearance. He's right there at the bar. Mm -hmm. he, he's still relevant. We can't we can't bring him up and then not bring him back. You can't do that. <laughs> yeah, once again, he was he is DC canon villain. Like he was brought up initially as a bit uh, villain, but eventually, but he actually did play a pretty prevalent role in uh, some of the earlier Batman comics. Right, and this was Mister Freeze's wife, right here on the right. She was part of. Uh... That whole thing where it's, uh, in one of the seasons where they're trying to like cure her illness or whatever. I believe so. I'm pretty sure that's her. But um, yeah, just the, the the sheer amount of just stuff going on in the back. Wait, hmm. I wonder if there's some significance to the dates on Calendar Man's attire there. <laughs> there there's always random Easter eggs like that in these, kind of like the Ryan Reynolds text. Yeah, for for Calendar Man, his whole gimmick once again is doing uh, date related crimes. So, like, if it's a holiday, it's something related to the holiday. Or if it's like, say, the seventh, then he'll do some his crime will in some way, shape, or form relate to seven. Right. Now this one's kind of hard to see. It looks like that's definitely a seven and a thirteen, but uh. It could just be uh, random numbers for all we know. Not not everything's a a deep dive into like an ARG or something. <laughs> Don't need to go full map pad over here. But um, yeah, this was definitely interesting. I appreciate it. Um, had very solid aspects. Nothing to really complain about. We had a weird android fight sequence with an android that had a what do you even want to call that? Like a spiteful like last uh last maneuver there just by destroying the thing and flipping harley off <laughs> it's like yes you may have beat me but uh you know nope <laughs> uh we also got a cameo appearance from the imperceivable man 
that that was damn hilarious <laughs> that that was solid oh man even if it was only just for like two seconds there that was good i, I hope he comes back somehow just like in some like random background like if we ever see like floating sunglasses or something that that would be damn hilarious <laughs> i do have a a minor gripe with his name though because he's just invisible imperceivable would mean that you literally are incapable of perceiving anything about him fair enough <laughs> so you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to hear him you wouldn't anything right But a uh, minor gripe aside, that was still pretty damn funny. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, just solid across the board. Um, Joker did his shout out to his family, which he's still with, which I think that's just going to be a thing for him for the rest of this series. I, I don't think yeah. he's going to move away from like the suburb family stuff. So that that should be damn fun, especially if the uh, him running for mayor becomes like an actual thing, like we speculated. So that that should be fun. Um, nice yeah, to see his Joker got... back. After season one, he went sane Joker, and then, like, halfway through season two, he got his original personality back, and now he just basically flips a coin between them. Right. Two cents of a coin to between them, so he goes back and forth between being villain Joker and being sane Joker, depending on if he's, like, at home or not. Right. Um, I guess the other thing to mention is, I guess, uh, we've uh, delved into the territory of Batman and Catwoman as a couple. Um, I guess we're not going to hear about Batman's butt, which is unfortunate, but uh, oh well. <laughs> they did lean into the uh, internet's latest obsession with feet, though, there. Yeah, it was, wasn't there... Uh... One of the Batmans that was, like, really obsessed with her, like, overly obsessed with Catwoman or something like that, to, like, his there's detriment always, or something. There's always some level of, like, sexual tension between him and Catwoman, but it, depending on the universe, whether or not he actually ends up getting with her or not, changes. Right. So, yeah, that, uh, that should be a thing. Um, <laughs> Do androids piss? Apparently so. That question has been answered. <laughs> Done. But uh, I guess that's uh, all we really got. It was a solid episode. You know, once again, not not a lot of hilarious moments, but there was still comedy, and uh, I appreciate the character progression. You know? So that's that's pretty awesome. Um, nice to I see Kite Man again. You know? I mentioned this at the end of the episode, but uh, this is also probably like, some of the best pacing the show's had. Right. Yes, just just leaving on Harley's ass there. <laughs> the the stereotypical um, pink uh, heart underwear. <laughs> but yeah, going forward, um, this should be an interesting dynamic if they want to run with it. You know what I mean? Just as an extra thing. Um, but other than that, yeah, solid episode. Looking forward to next week, whatever they choose to do. Um, I assume the mayoral race will be a thing at some point. Obviously, the Batman Catwoman thing is going to be a thing. You know, reintroducing Nightwing, he'll be back around, you know, with Batgirl and all that stuff. Uh, I assume we'll get more hero related stuff at some point because um, it seems like they're kind of leaning into that a little bit at the very least. Yeah, we're definitely having the whole Bat family thing be more of a thing in general this uh, season with their getting like over half an episode to themselves earlier and now introducing Catwoman as another dynamic. Right. Uh, yep. Got a healer on my phone. It's a hundred degrees. I, I'm not happy. So um, it's 96 here. <laughs> good times. Oh, well, uh, I think we'll leave it at that uh, for Harley this week. Um. Anyway, it's a lot episode. I enjoyed it, but, um, yeah, that's all we got. I'm going to go try not to melt. And hopefully uh, everybody out there is, uh, you know, staying safe and staying out of the heat if possible. So, yeah. Have a good morning, evening, afternoon. Whatever it is for you as you watch. Have a good one. We'll see you next time. <laughs>